All right, you guys. Welcome to U-Boat. My name is Koss, and I am going to show you how to play this game. I'm going to show you how to start your U-Boat. If you want, they they've done pretty good changes in this game. The game doesn't crash anymore, and it's pretty stable, so it's not a bad situation. All right, so we're going to make our captain real quick. Uh, I'm going to try to make him look like me. Oh, I'm going to try to make him look like me. Oh, let's Let's change our names. What we are, we're cost. And uh, boom! I guess we're in. <laughs> hey, that was easy. It looks nothing like me. Well, that's okay. He looks a lot better looking. I'll tell you that. So this thing's gonna load in. It's probably gonna take a really long time. Let's hope not. Sometimes it takes forever. But anyways, this is a pretty fun game. It's a management game, but it does have a first-person play to it, if you want to play it that way. Though I have to say it's not as effective. Um, managing the crew is uh, more effective in battle, but sailing the ship around in between battles is definitely more fun in first-person mode. Doing things like the hydrophone and, and trying to find the ships and stuff is pretty fun. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to show you how to load up your ship. Uh, this game does take a little bit of a long time. I know most people aren't used to 25, 30, 40 minute videos, so I was going to try and cut it back a little bit for you guys by just showing you how to load up the ship and then going into one of my ships that I already have going and, um, you know, just going off the dock from there with the mission ready and just zip out to where I'm supposed to. But for this one, I'll show you how you, how you get around and... I'll show you all the little things that this thing does. Okay, so the most important first thing that you really need to do to your ship is you need to make room with the st in your storage areas with stuff you already already have. So, in other words, um, like your galley, for example, you want to take what food you have and move it into here. Like, yeah, you want to take some of this and move it in here. Okay, he doesn't want to move it. Okay, well, we moved one thing. I don't know why I don't want to move the second piece. Huh. Maybe I have someone. I need to pick somebody specifically to do this. Okay. Um, galley. Here's where our food is. This is our storeroom. The reason I say this is because we're going to go and buy more stuff. Oh, you know why I can't do it? got too much stuff. The galley's already full, so let's dump some of these off. Now, the reason I'm doing this is the more types of food you have in your galley, the higher your uh, morale is. You get, like, pluses and minuses to base morale um, based on what's going on. So if you're in combat and you got a hole in your ship, your morale's going to be down. But if you have four different kinds of food and maybe music playing, uh, it could balance out and nobody will go crazy or go mutant. You know, mutiny on you, or whatever it is. So, anyways, there we go. Oh, I didn't want to do bacon. I wanted to do the canned food. Okay. Okay, so four different kinds is good. Uh, the ventilation. I should walk around the ship and show you guys all this stuff. But let me load this in. This is for when you're under underwater and you need to recycle your air. This cleans them out. Without these, uh, yeah, they die a very horrible death. Okay, so other things that need to be done. The gun decks need to be filled up. See how there's so whatever you have. You may want to drop. Tell them yes. Okay, so people are gonna start running around doing these things. And those guys are gonna help them. You'll see them walking around with backpacks and stuff on their backs. See the backpacks? And they're gonna fill them up. I think they take maybe two or three rounds each. And they're walking back and forth between the decks. Choose a different guy. And have this guy go to the warehouse. And I want to show me what you got. I want to resupply. And I want to resupply my food. So there's different things here. There's equipment, which is your repairs and your um, healing for your people. Your food, which is plenty of choices. And it just changes, actually. This isn't. There's other choices besides what you see here. Um, so I'm going to do that now. So I have bacon already, so we'll put more bacon on the bacon. You can carry a hundred in each slot of the food. Four or five of the medicine and the 
spare parts. This is scrap. You pick this up. Actually, I've never picked this up from anything yet. Um, most of the stuff that I get from ships is floating boxes of stuff, but I don't. I, I've never had a ship derelict on me. Uh, they're always fighting or maneuvering until the moment they sink. I've never actually tried to board a ship after it's been floating there. Uh, maybe I will in one of the videos. You know, it's all all exploration. So now this, the key thing here you want to do is just make sure you have different types of food so that you can maintain that four different kinds. And uh, so we transfer that, and we have these, so we'll add on to that. And uh, we'll do these because everybody likes the exotic fruits. Exotic fruits are luxury food ration. It just costs more. It doesn't really. I've never noticed anything other than the cost. Uh, we could technically get one more, but let's go back to equipment. We want to max this out, which is five, and we want to max this out. And uh, I could do more, but I think. Uh, we need a spot to put ammunition. And there's 40 more there, so yeah, is this this storage room holds a lot of stuff. This is probably the largest thing on your ship. Um, your deck guns, again, you know, keep putting stuff up here. Now that guy's moving these. Um, and you just keep loading your ship up with stuff as much as you can so that you can stay out there longer. This is the key to it all. Okay, so I'm going to leave him. I want to choose, this guy's already doing what I was going to show you earlier. You could ch click on the eyeball here and it'll bring it to him, to his point of view. And he's loading the torpedoes. Now, you see how he's just all by himself? Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. Now if I add a guy here, if it'll let me. Yeah. He got up off his bunk and he's going to help him. Now this process is going to go two times faster. One sailor loading even tells you one sailor loading will increase by about 300 percent. All right. Uh, if I can get it, it's very hard to do. Okay, there's two, and now I have two people helping him. And we're gonna make sure that he's the mechanic. As long as he's a mechanic, there's other choices here. As long as he's a mechanic, he will load torpedoes. Now, if I look at this, you see, I. Once these are all loaded, I can get four more torpedoes. See how the storage is opening up? Once they're opened up, all four of them, I will go to the storage thing here and uh, get four more. Alright, so we'll leave those guys at it. I'm going to take this guy I'm going to go to him personally because there's a first person view. Let's see. Leave position. Okay. All right. So now I'm in a first-person view. <coughs> now I can show you what's inside the ship. Sorry about that. Okay. So here's these guys loading this thing. He's gonna come back here. Some crank thing that they use. As he clips to the door. It's okay. This game isn't really about the first person, but it's cool to see. So that it's basically how they load these things. And then if I and now they're going to do tube 2 and 3 and 4 or whatever order they end up doing it in. So they lose, lower the boom and they'll connect us to it. There's three guys helping him, so it should go fast. Yep, see, so yeah, I went pretty fast. Uh, I would assume they might be waxing it, would be a something. I mean, that was never in a submarine and never read any kind of doctrine, but. Sounds like sanding. But then the. Snorkel has smoke coming out of it in this game, which is pretty funny, considering it's supposed to take air. So, but uh, aside the little things, I would think they would be waxing it, make it you know water resistant so it doesn't get anything in it while it's going. Because some of these are steam powered, T ones are steam powered. Torpedo, torpedoes type two, it's a T two is electric and then there's a T3 which is experimental which we don't have yet. Our missions come up where we could use them sometimes. And eventually in the headquarters you can research it. Okay so torpedo room also shares the bunks with some of the enlisted crewmen. Uh, that's pretty much all that's in here. I don't think there's any kind of controls. You can close the door if there's leaks. Next room has the storage room I believe. Yes, this is the storage for 
food that you no longer want to keep in your body. <laughs> and then closing it is tricky sometimes. Okay. This is not storage. This is... Uh, there we go. It's um, your controls. Your power controls. You can turn your control in different rooms on and off. Say the coning tower has a hole in it up top. Close the hatches. Turn off the power in there so that you don't end up with electrical problems. Obviously water and electricity don't mix very good. Okay, and there's other things. This is the back half, the control room, torpedo room, or it's the front half, I should say. And power battery room number two. Okay. Close that. More bunks. These are officers' bunks. Uh, salutables. Here's your... There's a cabinet here for storing things and using things. This is a rebreather. I'm going to take one of these right now for this guy. Got one other one. We can buy this at, this, at the storage place up top. Everything costs money. This card table for increasing your, you know, morale, especially if you're underwater. More bunks. This is the listening room. Hydrophones. You can get in here if you want. Let's see. What's it say? It's already occupied. Interesting. Somebody's in here. Really? I don't see anybody. Okay. Radio room. Same thing. You can get radio stations and actually listen to stuff. I'm in there now. Hmm. I guess there's no controls for that one. We position. Okay. Oh, now I'm here. Oh, he is here. He was just coming to it, is what it was. Just wasn't there yet. Alright, so those are... Ones, this one is the radio room, I believe. This is for listening. Above surface. This is the hydrophones for listening. Below surface. You can hear, you know, like props and chugs of engines and things of that nature. There's another bunk here, I believe. Skipper's desk. Oh, this is where I sleep. Right on. Okay, so that's my bed. This is about the center. Uh, navigation. When we get a snorkel, controls are over here somewhere. Replaces this box, I think. With something there. Uh, so you don't get lost. Uh, you get lost if you don't have someone here when you're out. It's, as long as you can see the land, uh, you don't need a guy there. Uh, if you have fighting ships, you don't need it while you're fighting ships. Once they're sunk and you got out of the range of the ships and stuff and back to open sea, best to put someone here again. Uh, the only time you're here is because you're not at war. You're, you know, it's not, the, the light's white. If There's different lights. There's a red and a blue. Um, the white light, the blue light, and the red light. Blue light, you know, means, you know, we're on in war, I guess. It doesn't make people crazy though. The red light means, you know, we, we got big trouble. You know, we need to be quiet and dive and and nobody makes a peep turn everything off. Alright, so we won't mess with that. Let's see, this is the echo sounder. This tells you how deep you are. I can actually do one here. So you do the shallow. 12 meters deep. Okay, so that's how deep our dock is right here. 12 meters. Not bad. Uh, the pump is just is for the bilge when water comes in here from either leaving your um, hatches open or whatever in a rainstorm or you know waves go over the coning tower uh, water comes in uh, you can close those off which I usually do uh, damage uh, brings in water uh, the props in the back anything that goes outside shooting the torpedoes all brings in a little bit of water after a while you have to turn the pump on this is more bunks for these guys. These are enlisted again. They play cards here. They eat here. They're sizzling in the background. That's the kitchen. Sell you more stuff here. The gyro compass. Oop, I told you what it did. Oh, I could click on it here. An operating gyro compass reduces navigation errors by four times. So there you go. It's good to run that, but when it is time to be quiet, this has to be turned off. And you have to manually do it. So you have to be quick. Uh, there's 
There's the depth steers, I think they're called. Depth steers, yes. These the station which allows the rotation of the ship vertical steers on the bow and stern. The operation of the steers can be manual or automatic using an electric engine which rotates the steers. The first method is less accurate and might make it impossible to maintain a periscope depth during poor weather, whereas in the second one, the working engines emit a sound which make it easier for enemies to detect your ship. Hmm. So, yeah. I use them when I'm trying to aim torpedoes in bad weather. Yes, that's a good idea. Okay, I think we were already in there. Okay, so up here is the coning tower. That there is the uh, attack periscope, I believe. And then there's a seat over here for a guy that will help you with the mathematics on where the torpedo needs to go. It speeds up the process of him aiming at tor the torpedoes, which is helpful. Uh, there's another there's another periscope here. Oh, it's over here. I'm all turned around. This is the observation periscope. Uh, you don't get no help with this one, but this by putting someone here does add one more person to the speed of figuring out where the torpedo needs to go and it goes by a percentage starting at zero and works itself up when it you know when you're at 98 99 100 percent it still doesn't mean you're going to hit the ship it just means that they have the best the best math that they could possibly get on shooting you know where that ship may be when they fire you know but he could turn or anything like that so distances so if they know you're there you're never going to hit them at distance you're going to have to get in with within five cables half a mile within a half a mile so they have no and then you have to fire when he's turning into his turn. You don't want to catch him when he's straightening out and just, you know, zigging and zagging the other way. You waste. I've I've actually gone out and shot eight torpedoes and hit nothing. It's because they were that good. You know, destroyers and warships they they turn very quickly, but like freighters and stuff are not very good at it. Okay, so we saw the front, right? Yeah, we saw all this. Okay, let's keep going back. So there's a light here. I think I explained that. Different ones, different things. More sleeping. The galley is where you cook stuff. He's already doing it, which is good. Looks good. Like like cheese soup. And he's cooking water over there. Right on. That's about all I know how to do is cook the water. This? Yeah, not for me. Well, I'm getting pushed out of the way. And something fun about a submarine in it. Okay, so... I believe this is the bathroom. Yep, another storage bin. <laughs> yeah, that's good that this is right right here. I can't figure out how to shut it. Come on now. Close it. Okay, whatever. This one, it's a storage room. It's the actual storage room. So this little door here holds eight thousand kilograms. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I'm laughing, are you? Okay, so those guys are still moving those. Let's put these here. The more the merrier. The more that's up top, the less I, you know, the more shooting we can do. The flat guns, I don't have any rounds for them right now, but we have 4,000. 1,000 armor piercing and 3,000 high explosive. 20 millimeter, I believe. And the deck gun's 88 millimeter. And we have high explosive, armor piercing, signal smoke, and more high explosive. Alright. The galley's got food, the ventilation's got their things. Alright. I don't... Oh, I get a chance to close it and it wouldn't do it. I clicked it, but I'm stupid. I clicked the wrong button. Anyways, we'll come back to that door later. Alright, getting pushed out of the way. In here... Uh, diesel engines, crazy stuff. The ventilator's right there. If you have to turn it on manually, you can, but it makes a ton of noise. Okay, but it does clean the air. Right now we're on the surface, so we're getting fresh air through the coning tower, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you do get holes in your ship, you can close these. You can tell them to evacuate and then shut it down. You know, close the door and then it'll hold water, but uh, at least it won't sink. Maybe. <laughs> really circumstantial. 
Uh, electric engines are here. This is for when you're underwater. Diesels need air. So when you're underwater, you have to run these. You got about, I don't know how long you got. It might tell us. Oop, getting pushed. Uh, it tells me max gear and noise. This thing is about 75%, just like it says, as opposed to this. This is, we'll just say this is, uh, we do about 20. We do about 15 or so, 17 maybe with these on the surface. Nice weather, flat, you know, no waves, that kind of thing. Uh, salvage, this is if you find uh, salvage parts and stuff from ships that derelict or anything like that. Uh, sometimes you get, and he'll make them into usable parts for repairing the ship. It's very effective. I've never actually found any. Only what we start with, and that is it. So, treat them like gold. Don't throw them away. You can buy them at the storage shack. <laughs> so, uh, compressors, diesel one, runs off fuel, makes lots of noise. Electric one's quiet, uses the battery. Uh, replenishes the air uh, after you blow the tanks. You blow the water out of your, you know, your tanks to come back up to the surface and it takes away from the air that you breathe you know so it's good to have these compressors compressed up all the air they can so that it doesn't take away your air when you need it uh, it uses about half of its total capacity between the two to come up to the surface once so you really could come up do your business dive again get away that kind of thing and then come up again but you'd have to run them then if you went down again you'd never you'll never see the surface again because you don't have the air, you know, that's just life. Uh, the rear torpedo, yes, it has a rear torpedo, and it is a, uh, a rear facing, so when you're running away, this works. It does work, and it is loaded, and it is heated up. They're heating up the torpedo in this one. Uh, you heat up the torpedoes so that when they leave the chute, uh, when they hit the ship, they actually go off. In other words, you're... It's kind of like starting the engine on your on a car before you ghost ride it off the cliff, you know. Otherwise, you're relying on it to be, you know, like you're gonna ghost ride it off the cliff with it in gear and hope it starts up before it hits. This way, we start it up first, and then we throw the brick on the pedal and let it go. That's essentially what you're doing. It's already running when they when they let it go. It's already warmed up. The engine's been spinning. Close the door. They flood it and pow. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Okay, so that's pretty much the ship. Let me go up here. You haven't seen the top. I don't know how to climb because I'm a noob. I don't usually play in this mode. But okay, so here's the observation thing. We'll go, we'll go in it so you can kind of get the idea. And I can go into manual mode. Now over here, top left, I can rise this up. I can look around. If you hold down the left shift, you could turn it quickly, let go, and go slowly, see? Press it, and you're zipping around. Okay. Um, you have different views over here on the right. Times one, times three. It's times three. Let's find ourselves a target. This is a pretend target. I'll find something in the bay here. Okay. We'll go for this guy here. Okay, so... Nice and close. Get this down here. Uh, the type of site. Ooh, that's really good, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna do like this. What was the other one? Ghost site. Okay, yeah, I like this one. And with this one being like this, we'll probably go back to times one. Okay, so I'm going to times one for a reason. Identification book. Let's see, this looks like. It looks like an aircraft. It looks like an aircraft carrier, doesn't it? Okay, so that's what it is. <laughs> uh, this is the what is it called? The statimeter tool. Now, what this does is, it, it it's a there's two different there's two different lenses, and in order to get it to work, you have to do what it says. It says use the QNE to rotate the ghost image so that it is sea so that its sea level is on the level of the highest mast 
of the target ship. So you want the ghost to go above the actual thing. So, so yeah, like so. Okay. You see that? Let me move this thing out of the way. So put those legs right on its roof, more or less. Okay. And then you hit set, but it's not here because that's not a ship. And then that gives you the distance. And then this one is a chronometer. If he's not moving, you just have to manually put in zero. How uh, that happens. You know, like you find a, a derelict ship and you have to go check it out. And you didn't bring the engineer on it, so you can't mine it. So you end up having to shoot it with a torpedo or a deck gun. So anyway, so we'll just say, I I'm going to pretend like it's gonna, like this dock is moving, so I'm going to move. So what you do is you hit start, and then as it moves, which is really fast, but I'll just pretend like this is really steady motion of a ship going by, you know. <laughs> Very steady, isn't it? And when you get to the end of the dock, which there may not be one, I may have to choose the next guard tower. <laughs> And then I hit stop, and it tells me how fast the ship is going. You know, based on these other figures. Not so much this, but... Well, this is helpful if you get the right thing, because it, they know how long the ship is. You know, based off documentation. And so, by doing this, it gets the distance. And with these two together, plus this, how f you know, seeing how they know how long it actually is. And then how long it took us it to go past this? What's this called? This should be important. The chronometer. It tells you how fast he's going. This is very useful. So then you hit set. It'll say set if, it was, if there's no target. Um, this is the course tool. This is if you have a, a locked target. You spin this around, and it tells you you know he's going left or right. Is he coming straight at me? Is he on a slight angle? And you turn this thing until the angle that you. He appears to you, you know, appears to you. Now, if if you do this one, remember, it's going to take a while for the torpedoes, you know, to zero in, you know, for everyone to get the 100%. And if you flank this guy and make a turn on him, or he turns, it changes this. The torpedo is going to miss because you had you said it was going away from you, and you're looking at the rear end of it. But then you come around to the side, and now you're looking at the side of it, but you didn't change this. It still thinks it's driving away from you, so it's going to fire straight at it as it just this, as the ship goes sailing by, and it just seems to go straight out like that. Does that make sense? Okay. So be aware. Remember, where, wherever you set this, try to stay there. It's best to attack a ship from the side. You have the best chance of hitting it, unless he knows it doesn't know you're there. And straight up, the butt works good too. <laughs> it's a guaranteed kill. Um, and then this one's the warm up the torpedoes. You flood the torpedoes. If you do more than two, you can change the dispersion. You know, 10 degrees, 0 degrees. You know, if you want no degrees, you know, one, 0 degrees would be one straight right behind the other. It hit both in the same spot. Uh, I don't think we could change the speed. I think these are set. Oh, we can change the speed. Huh. Okay, I've never done that. 40 miles an hour would be really nice. I think that changes their um, their distance, though. But I think 40 knots is probably good. And this is the how deep you want them. Uh, 15 meters. I don't know why you would do that. Uh, one and a half meters to two meters is good. Two meters is below the water line. One one and a half meters. You know, it's all below the water line. But I mean, you don't want them to see it coming, but you don't want to go under it either. Never missed with 1.5. Dispersion, usually have it about, I don't know, a few degrees. Just in case you miss. A couple degrees. It depends. Depends. If you're really far away, you want to keep this really tight. If you're really close, you may want to spread it out. Especially if the guy's moving fast. Warships tend to zigzag a lot, so you may want to mess with this a little bit. We're just in experimentation with multiple ships to see what happens. If you don't want to fire, if you fire, it shoots these two. You can do them all. This one goes out the rear, remember that. So by shooting this one at something that's in front of you is uh, going to waste it. I think just by re-clicking them, it turns them out, you know. It says no. Okay, so now you basically got how to aim against a dock. That's pretty good. Alright, so let's get out of that. 
Uh, so you have the deck gun here, 88 millimeter. In the next video, I'll use it. You guys will see that going. Uh, hopefully we never have to use this AA gun other than just taking out ships for fun. It's fun to sink a ship with this. <laughs> Especially if he's not shooting back. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing. He just keeps trying to set them on fire and watch them burn. That's essentially what you do. Okay, so let's go back to the storage. Anybody working? This guy is... Everybody's done working? Oh, he's done. Okay, so now this guy went... We can go to his position. He automatically went and started taking that scrap we had in the storage room and turning it into spare parts. So because he's a mechanic, some of these guys, he's the chief bozeman, that's this guy, radio operator, chief engineer, and me the watch officer. Okay. And I'm just the one that runs around and tells everybody what to do and watches to make sure you get it done. Alright, so we're not going to overwork anybody here. Just the officers are on duty right now. Everybody else is bank cards. So let's go here and fill up our ship with whatever space these guys have made since we've started. We're still moving the food. I can speed all this up, but I want to make sure I have everything that I could, or I can. I don't want to do that yet. I want to make sure I get all the torpedoes I can carry. I don't know if I have enough money for T2s. I have a few. Uh, I don't plan on really worrying about which ones are which. Let's make sure I have enough. I got 98 bucks. Should get some more fuel. Fuel's cheap. 10 bucks. Right on. Items. I don't have enough of that. Alright, so what do we got here? Okay, it takes three days to load this thing up with everything I just did. And, uh, let's go back here one more time. Because we want to get as much food as possible. We've Everything's in, so let's see, we got more. So let's put some here. Got eight bucks left. <laughs> we'll keep the eight bucks. All right, so he's got more sausages. <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there, guys. <laughs> I'm thinking it though. All right, so this sausage vest is ready to go. <laughs> That's essentially it. Um, you can, if you had money, you could buy more crew so that you could rotate guys out. It's useful later on after they've been out you know, maybe two three missions and start buying a bunch of guys with your money so that you could let guys off see here's a, this will always refill I could buy them all right now if I had the money and then come back in a week because every mission is about seven days or so I've had them go as long as 13 days long battles running away forever kind of thing uh, it fills it up uh, once you have a crew like this is the crew I already have I have five officers, 16 of 18, seamen, and one something, a big wig, maybe general, I don't know, a colonel, not sure, anyway, so I can take one more guy, hey look, there's a Walter Koss, I wonder if he's related, <laughs> we do a Peter Becker, I can get one more guy in here, a Klaus Fischer, I know a Klaus. He's a pretty funny guy that does World of Tanks. Uh, we'll take the Klaus. Alright. We exit. Oh, no. We could get more people. It's 17. We think we should do the Ui Fischker. Yeah, why not? If you click on them, it tells you what, what they're about. Unassigned. I don't think I can assign him. Okay. It does tell you about them. I think it tells you about them here. Like this guy is a ward. Deprived him of everything. He does not like people but still finds himself in the service. Weirdo. Probably don't want to hire him. Brawler. When the fight comes he's the first on the line. A natural born soldier. Cleans his shoes every day. That's probably a keeper. And they change up. There's different kinds of guys. 
He comes from a poor family. His father sends him to the army to learn discipline. He hates service in the military. He's probably not going to do good. This is his dream to be here. Maybe it's a good one. Plans to rebuild his life in Craig's Marine. So he was homeless. Okay, so you know he's got nowhere to go. He's got nothing to lose. Someone like that could be useful in a wartime situation. <laughs> got nothing to lose. He may be your volunteer to do something crazy. You know, save the world. That's what they're thinking. Anyways, so yeah, and there's these change all the time. They repeat quite a bit too. Uh, I usually go for the way they're dressed overall. Because, <laughs> you know, that way I could tell them apart. This guy way over here, and I have to choose myself to use him. And he'll say that every time. I haven't done anything for these people yet, and splendid work. Anyways, he never changes what he says. It's the same shit. That's his job. To say that, and that's it. And stand here in the rain next to this car every day of his life till the day he dies. According to this game. Oh, he says that too. I think he says some other stuff, but he always says the same thing when you approach him. So these are your missions. If I choose to do this mission, I get 10,000 for going in here, driving around, until I do this many nautical miles inside of it, and I get 10,000. If I sink 4,000 tons of stuff, which is two small ships or one big freighter, I get another 10,000 credits, and I get an officer, a radio operator, which is very useful. They have more than one type of person in the ship, so one could rest while the other one is still running the machinery that needs to be running. Uh, this one, this is experience. This is ways to buy more stuff, such as more officers in your uh, ship or free roam. Uh, there's research that you could do. You know, it's a land-based situation, so you have to take someone out of the ship so that they could research the stuff. What's this? Espionage. Uh, I have to help a spy carry out his missions, and they always have me help him do something else. But I get the spy. Another radio operator. This will be calm and easy, which is probably a bad idea. You know, or it's hard to sneak up on stuff when it's nice and calm out. It's better when the storms are going, because they don't even know you're there. It's much more effective, especially at night too. But anyways, so that's that. Uh, you could take breaks. You know, you've been out there for two weeks, three weeks, a month. You come back and give them 14 days off, which is very helpful for them. It replenishes all their reputation or their, you know, their morale and a whole bit. And they even get bonuses depending on where you send them. Uh, they do keep track of your guys for how many battles they in. They get awards and medals and stuff based on the uh, missions they've done and how many they've done. You get a medal at two missions, you get a medal at eight, that kind of thing. If you're involved, if these guys are involved in sinking submarines or, uh, you know, doing some of the other small tasks, uh, they get rewards for them and it adds up and they get ranked up. You'll see. If you watch this series, you'll see. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Okay, so this is what the reputation was for. I can increase my officer, officer limit on board to 6 to 7. Free roam. It opens up the possibility for me to send an officer on missions in headquarters, which I already have one of those. And then this allows me to run two at the same time, which is helpful. And this is limited once, once the missions are gone. It's gone. This is the headquarters. This is the slot that they're talking about, and here's the missions. Sonar decoys, improved toilets, hydrophones, equipment production, accumulators, ammunition production, T3 torpedoes, armored coning tower, snorkels, radar detection, military stash, aerial reconnaissance, and more stash. That's a pretty big map. Um, I think there's something down here somewhere. It's a pretty big map. I can't remember. There used to be a port over here, I thought. Maybe it was up here. Um, I have gone out as far as out to here or so, roughly, and I've picked up New York radio stations. 
So, I'm not sure how far out this game goes, but I remember there was a port out here not too long ago. Now, there is some workshop stuff where they've added ports, and I'm sure as this game goes along, there'll be more ports added. Oh, you know what? They're not going to show me the ports. I'm not in the, I'm not in the map. I'm in the wrong map, but yeah, there's stuff all over. There's a, but I think that's it for research. So, like I said, using up those two slots, you end up with discipline like crazy and nothing to use it on after about maybe a dozen missions or so. It just depends. Okay, so do I want to do that? If I do do it, I want to do the snorkels, and i got to use an engineer. I don't have any. Everybody's on the ship. So anyway, so that's a choice you have to make. If you want to take someone off your ship, you need an engineer, so either this guy or this guy, but it leaves very few people on board. What I would do is I'd build up your reputation, get a point and get an extra man on here, and then remove, put him in here, even though you have the space, don't use it. You know, just, that way you could have an extra guy here, you could use him to do that, and you still have your five-man crew. Which is definitely the minimum I would run this at. If you do four-man crew, I wouldn't try to sink ships with it unless you, you know, unless it's a single ship. I wouldn't be taking on destroyers, aircraft carriers, or battleships or anything like that with a four-man crew. So, anyway, so I did. I pick a mission. I don't think I did. Okay, so let me go pick a mission, and we'll do a little bit of sailing. But I'm not actually going to do that one. I'm going to get into my own thing. Uh, but we will take a mission. We'll do the Peter Schultz thing. Ding, 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 ding. Goodbye. Now I can drive my ship. Or sail my ship. And off we go. Let's get on here. Leave the position. There we go. Now we can see where we're going. How's that? Keep the rain out. Remember I told you guys that? There's a light here somewhere. Yeah. Check that out. I don't think I can move it around or nothing, but... <coughs> now everybody in the world can see where we are. Never run this light <laughs> for any reason ever. Only here in this dock. <laughs> once you get, once you get out of this harbor area, I'll never turn this light on for any reason ever. It will completely give you away. And this thing does not take hits from destroyer guns and five-inch guns. Very nice. Uh, one or two hits and you're done for. And, and this thing sinks very quickly, and everything happens very fast. I've never actually survived getting beat up by another ship. I think maybe one time I did, but I was lucky because the the bottom of the ocean was only like 50 meters deep and I didn't get crushed as I sunk down, so I just sat on the bottom of the thing and maybe it took me two hours of in-game play of repairing and letting, you know, repairing as much as I could then letting water in to half flood the whole thing so guys could get in to the room to fix the holes, close them in there with the rebreathers on. You know, billage out the ship again and then open the doors and free flood the ship and let them out before they died. And it was a pain. It took hours. I lost a bunch of guys too. And when these guys die, they're dead. So you get a level 6 guy dying, that hurts. You end up with a, So that's why I say buy lots of people, rotate them. You know, back there at the docks, rotate them. Let's see, this is something cool this thing does. Okay, so here's all the ports. So yeah, there's ports up here. Yes, port's way up here. That's really tricky up there. It's super shallow. I've gotten stuck many times. You have to like zoom way in so you can see where stuff is. Use your echo finder a lot. Uh, this is where we're supposed to go. There's a port there. There's a port there. I'm pretty sure there's nothing down here. Never know. I didn't think so. Uh, more areas to check. Pretty sure New York does not have a port, but it does. Oh, it does. There's a couple ports here. So yeah, there's a lot of areas to explore in this game. And just to give you a, a scope, we have a times five thing here. It's gonna go fast, but 
It still takes a long time to get places. This is why I have to do this in pieces now. Just to give you a scope. I'm gonna start zooming in on this. Just to give you an idea. Now we've been going five knots since I left. And that's as far as we've gotten right there. I'm gonna tell him to turn, hold down shift around here. Hold down shift. I'm gonna stay close to the edge just so you guys can see it. There's another sub there. See him? Go, go past him. He'll probably be gone by the time we get there. To there. Let's see. Keep zooming out. Hold down shift. It makes a new line. All you have to do is put your pointer out here. Hold down shift. There's the line. And you want to kind of... Once you get out here, you don't want to get too close to the edges because it slows, slows you down. So you get about like that. Zoom way out. Hold shift. Where do we gotta go? Holy smokes. Okay. I don't wanna get too close to the land because it'll if you get close to the land it changes. You'll see as we go through here how the, sp the speed changes. The times five is different when you're close to land as it is when you're in open sea. Open sea is very, very fast. Another thing you wanna try and do is use electric motors as often as you can. Except for when, if you think you're going to come into battle. It saves a lot of fuel. But uh, you don't want to be down here with your battery and then come into combat. Because you won't stay underwater for very long. Or you'll s be stuck, you know, with no power. Very dangerous. This is very, very risky to run the way I do. But in this bay right here, you're okay. But once you get about here, you're not okay anymore. I want you to make this turn and out of this square. This is all enemy area. Bad news. The only friendlies we have is over here. <laughs> but you gotta go through the port of Gilbertar. Which is certain death if anybody sees you at all. And there's other ports here that we haven't s discovered yet. Uh, we only know what our aerial reconnaissance has found, you know. Um, these are friendlies. Uh, Russia. Some of them are neutrals. This is neutral. Russia neutral. So, yeah. It's another enemy. And you eventually get to all of these sooner or later. I don't think there's anything on the other side here. I've never actually tried to go through the Red Sea. I don't think you can. No, I don't think so. No, no, no. But you can't get up here into the Baltic Sea, I believe. This is really tricky. You almost had it. It's really, really tricky. This is some seriously crazy stuff, but I'm not anywhere near it to see it. That ship is on its... Oh, you know what, when you, f when you see ships, when your radio operator is working, you get a little bit of money for this, even though it's a friendly. I got 150 bucks for just letting headquarters know where there was a, where a friendly was. Just intelligence. In case something happens, maybe he come help, but I've never actually had him help. I've never seen a sub working outside of 200 miles of this area. I see them out, out here. They see them in the bay here. You know, I'm usually up in the north part and over here, but I never see anything out here but enemy. Only enemy. Or I find derelicts. You know, like German derelicts. Subs. Bad things happen to them. They have different reasons why they die every time. Most of them is from asphyxiation. Which means they uh, ran out of air underwater or something like that, or... Not sure. Anyways, okay, so this guy is cruising along. So I'm going to do the times five, as you can see. It's definitely faster. And it moves faster. I still have that light on. Times one is not too bad. The lighthouse is freaking out. Watch the lighthouse times five. It's like disco night. <laughs> Get down tonight. <laughs> Get down tonight. All right. Uh, you can manually steer this baby. Now, because I did that and made that that turn, like I did. Ooh, I don't want to do that. Um, everything that I made on that map is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, you have to do it all over again, but 
for whatever reason he was headed right straight for that dock. Wasn't too sure why he was doing that. So I had to make a turn myself. Okay, let me turn off this light. My guy should still be up there. Leave position. Okay, turn that off. He's got his own binoculars here. He doesn't actually use them. Alright, so we're going to go to other guys. Now, radio operator. See how these guys down here are getting tired? Blue. You could, if you hold down tab, at any, it doesn't matter where you are. Just press tab, you get everybody here. I can tell them where to go quickly. Like he's at, the guy was up top up there. Let's see, let's get on him again. I'm going to tell him to go to the observation periscope. We're just clicking it. And see, so he'll get off, go down, and get on that. This is how you play the game effectively. It's fun to play it the other way, the way I've been playing it up to this point. But this is the effective way to do it. Uh, so guys that are tired, tell them to sleep. You know, make sure there's always someone listening, doing something. So the radio operator doesn't really, he's tired, but I'm going to run him free real quick because they have authentic music in this game. And when you're not in a wartime situation, and you click on a guy up here, like he's on the attack periscope, so he does see a target, the port that we just came from. I can click on it. I can view it. I can make my kite drive intercept it. I can target it. And if I target it, I can calculate torpedo course to it. I can open up this, and when he gets to 100%, which he is, I can close these and fire and I hit that thing. Right now, I can destroy that port. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to the radio operator and do nice things, like listen to the radio. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's pretty, pretty cool, huh? It's a high, top 10 right there. 1939. Okay. <laughs> if you don't like that, you can do the old classics. It's good attack music right here, right? Nah, 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 nah. Alright, so that's fun stuff. But when you do that, it brings the morale up. See, there it says, very dishes. Remember the four things are plus 12. The music's a plus 10. And the white light's a plus 10. So my discipline is right now at plus 32. And nothing's gone wrong. So, you know, it's just going to stay at 100%. So these guys are very, very happy in this ship right now. This is almost as happy as they could possibly get without coming off of, you know, one of the highest cost, best vacations I could possibly give them, right? Which they haven't been at sea long at all to even get the vacation. You got to be at sea for four days, I think, to get vacation. All vacations are two weeks. But so what you want to do is, if you have research going, which I don't, and it's you know got ten, fifteen days left, that would be the best time to send you guys on vacation, because they will get their research finished, and when they come back, you can update the ship and put it on. And by the time they load the ship with all the torpedoes and junk and the food and everything. Uh, upgrades will be finished at the same time and you just, you go out with a brand new situation for your ship you know like the snorkel I think is the most important thing because that allows you to go you know periscope height and still run your diesels and get air in the ship without having to come deck you know what is it called I'm a tanker I play a lot decks of wash decks of wash will get air in you have to open up the hatch to get it water will come in if it's you know nasty weather. We're in a port right now, so the rain's okay. But um, when you're at periscope depth, you, the snorkel comes up and it brings air in. You can run the diesels, get air for the crew, and the discipline stays up and no one knows where you are. You just got this little... And you could bring your... drop your periscope down. The snorkel stays up there, but you could bring that up and down too, but that doesn't go up and down like a periscope. That goes up and down like a... you know, like a... like a... 
a gate on the back of a trailer that comes up on an angle it like lays on its side over here on this one side whoa lays on the side here comes up here I think it, and then when you when you use the thing it lays this way and it stands up something like that or maybe I don't remember it lays over somehow and then stands it up but once I put it up I always leave it up if you don't want the enemy to see you with it up uh, just run electric mode put an electric and the smoke will stop coming out of the air intake of the snorkel and then they won't see the smoke <laughs> yeah you figure that one out right okay anyways I think I'm gonna stop it here and I am going to start a new video on with the upgraded ship with the snorkel and I think I have a radar on that one and so I can see planes coming and stuff and then uh, I will run it like that so you can see that kind of stuff you know sinking ships and shooting down airplanes hopefully or maybe and not getting killed in the next video alright you guys thank you and have a good night